Hi guys, welcome to video number 20 for the tutorial series on the Canon 500D. Um, in this video we're going to be covering white balance. Um, so what white balance is, what it does and how it affects your images and or video as well. Um, the video camera that I'm currently shooting at the moment, um, my trusty Sony H50, um, is set for tungsten white balance or incandescent because that's the lighting conditions that are in this room at the moment. Um, if that was changed then the image would look a slightly different um, colour, um, it would look warmer or colder. So uh, I will show you how you deal with that on the 500D, how you change white balance and why um, during this video. Um, one thing to note on white balance and what it is, it's the colour temperature of light. Um, so every, every different light source has a different colour temperature. It's normally measured in Kelvin. Um, but on the 500D we're given a selection um, of options that we can choose which have icons is AWB auto white balance, there's tungsten which is a little bulb symbol and there is fluorescent lighting which you would see in offices, those tube lights um, as well and a couple of other options also as well as a custom white balance function um, so we'll have a look at that as well. Um, one thing to note as well with regarding white balance is whether you shoot in RAW or JPEG, RAW being the um, RAW negative format if you like for the camera, um, which gives you the better quality images, more data and more information to deal with in post-production. Um, in RAW we can change white balance after the fact, so if we get it wrong during a shoot then we can change that later. With JPEG we don't actually have that luxury. Whilst you can change the colour and a small change to white balance, there isn't the data there within the JPEG file um, to make correct changes, which is why we always say shoot raw. Um, JPEG's fine, but the, the downside on JPEG is you need to make sure you get the exposure correct, really, and the white balance settings correct as well, otherwise you're going to have problems dealing with that in post-production later. So uh, let's have a look at white balance and how we deal with it on the Canon 500D. Okay, how I'm going to show you how to deal with white balance on the 500D. I've got set up here the Canon 500D on a tripod and um, with a battery grip. Excuse the jumps and exposure on this camera, the meter's rubbish on this thing. Um, so I'll show you on the back of the camera how to change the options. I have my subject, um, which once it changes exposure is a little bird ornament. There you go. And these two lights and a white background. Um, okay, these lights are desk lamps and ow, rather hot. Um, they are normal incandescent bulbs, so the typical kind of household lights that you would see with desk lamps, overhead lights. So it's considered quite a warm colour temperature of light, around 3200, I believe, in Kelvin. And it's the option where you, it's the kind of lighting that you would choose that bulb option as well. But we'll explain that as we go on. So this is a setup that we're going to be using. Sorry there's no model and we're not outside. Um, but I don't have uh, that uh, option at the moment. So here we go. Looking at the back of the 500D, this is a view that you should be quite familiar with by now if you've been following along with my videos. Um, ignore the exposure settings I've got. I am shooting manual 150th at f6.3 ISO 400. That's because I've taken some still images of the subject. Um, which is, you can't see because it's in front of the camera at the moment, the uh, little bird ornament um, to show the effect of the different white balance as well um, during the video, so I'll put those up at some point. And <clears throat> now to change the white balance, what you will notice here on the camera it says AWB Auto White Balance. Okay. Now ignore the white balance that you're seeing on this video camera, uh, where are we, this one here, because this is white balance correctly for tungsten lights. Okay, you will see when I show you the stills. And what I will do in a moment is I will run through these different white balance settings on the 500D whilst I shoot some video on this. So you can see the change as I cycle through those options as well. If I had tried to show you on the back of the screen, it wouldn't look quite the same. Okay, now auto white balance. One thing to note about auto white balance is in tungsten lights or indoors um, in your house. In the majority of buildings, unless they've got the fluorescent overhead um, office lights that you see, it's absolutely rubbish. And what you may find is you are, your pictures come out kind of orange or warm looking, and that's because auto white balance on Canon DSLRs is absolutely shocking at guessing or dealing with tungsten lights. 
I don't know whether that's just because of the software that's wrong or um, a difference in bulbs maybe in the countries where they're manufactured who knows you know a difference in color temperature of the bulbs so white balance so if we press the WB button here at the top we can actually change the white balance we're on auto at the moment I will say in its defense auto does quite well in cloudy and daylight settings but if you're shooting RAW or certainly if you're shooting JPEG I would recommend choosing either one of these options that you see along here and dialing in the correct or as near as you can do correct white balance so you have some consistency. Auto white balance will jump around and change on every single image that you take because the, the scene that you take a picture of will be different, different colours, different tones and all, that's why auto white balance is something that I will I very very rarely use unless I can't figure out the white balance and I let the camera go I'll let it do it. Okay now daylight you'll notice here the value has come up as 5200K that's 5200 Kelvin that's the colour temperature of daylight noted by the little sun there so if you were shooting outside you can set it to that if you go to shade which could be outside during the day underneath some trees um, in the shade of a building or otherwise then that goes to 7000 Kelvin okay it's a little bit cooler and then cloudy okay so if you've got an overcast day you can then set it to cloudy and that will pretty much get you there in terms of the correct white balance. White balance will actually affect the colour rendition of your images so how colours are rendered. And now if we go to tungsten okay this is the conditions that we're in currently with the lighting that we're using to ah, touch the book, the light again the lighting that we're using to light the bird here at the moment on this backdrop is tungsten or incandescent it may well be uh, known as as well. Uh, it's similar to candlelight although candlelight is considered a little bit warmer I don't mean warmer in terms of when you touch the flame it burns you but a warmer colour temperature and white fluorescent again office buildings and so forth so within these settings here one two three four five settings we can pretty much get where we want get to where we want to get to flash here is when you are using flash photography where you've got a flash mounted on top of the Canon 500D whether you're shooting with the inbuilt flash as well or if you're in a studio that's the setting I always use when I go into a studio so I have consistent results on white balance um, auto white balance will automatically color temperature for flash if you are using flash and it registers that flash is being used but personally I would rather always stick with the flash white balance setting so I know I'm going to get consistent results next we see custom white balance now what custom white balance does is it references the white balance from an image that you take now generally you would take an image of a grey card or a white piece of paper it's cheaper okay you can get um, grey reference cards and white balance targets from many different manufacturers some of them really cheap what you will find is if you actually tested them in a lab that the white balance or colour temperatures that you get from those cards will be different on each occasion or from you know from different card to card even across the range of the same manufacturer unless you spend some a fair amount of money on them so that's why I, at the moment I don't bother with them um, I'm trying to find a decent white balance target system to go for now how to set a custom white balance okay here we can press the menu button here on the second tab along boom, and then three down we have custom white balance okay and when we hit that we can actually reference the white balance from an image so if I can actually just take an image here is I'll just bring that up I can bring live view up is I'm going to take an image of this white card here okay so as we are from here click okay there we go so I'm going to reference white balance from this card under the lighting conditions that we are dealing with at the moment. I'll just turn live view off, go to the menu, and I'm going to select custom white balance and then hit set here. Okay. So from that image that we've just taken, we can now reference white balance information from it. So you could take a white piece of paper, plain piece of paper, in your camera bag with you. Um, under the same lighting conditions that you want to take a picture of you could possibly hand that white piece of paper to your subject and model have them hold it whilst you take a picture and you can reference it later in post-production if you're dealing with RAW or you could just literally fill the frame 
with the white piece of paper as you saw oops, hang on a moment here okay and take a picture you will need to put the, man, the camera on manual focus because it won't focus on a solid white or a solid color okay take your picture and then go into the menu custom white balance and then hit set okay and here we have use white balance data from this image for custom white balance okay and then it tells you to set the white balance to custom there if you haven't done already so we can actually go up to oh, turn my view off we can go up to white balance and then set custom white balance and there we have it okay that's how to set custom white balance you can make minute adjustments to the white balance on the 500D as well shifting the towards a particular colour in the range or a colour temperature that I will cover in a later video and um, this will basically get you started so what we'll have a look at now is shooting video through the 500D of Mr Birdie here okay and we will cycle through the white balance settings to let you visually see the changes in the colour rendition um, of what you see in the video and I'll also throw the stills up as well later on okay here we are now um, Recording on the Canon 500D, um, recording the birdie under the same lighting conditions that you saw earlier, which is tungsten incandescent light, 3200 Kelvin. Okay, and we'll have a quick look and see what changes um, visually um, changing the white balance has, or what effects changing the white balance has. Uh, what I'm going to have to do is stop each clip and that I do. Okay as we go along. Currently on this one we are on auto white balance as you can see it looks a little bit orange, the colours aren't quite represented quite well, in particular the paper is looking quite orange in colour okay that's because the white balance is incorrect basically. Auto white balance like I said before is rubbish um, for tungsten lights so we'll now change it along to the next setting okay now here we are on daylight setting again looks quite similar to auto white balance Okay, um, possibly, possibly a little bit of an improvement, but again, looks a little bit too orange. So in the next one now, what we will do is we will change to um, the next setting, which is going to be shade. Ooh, and here we are on shade, and this is clearly far orange, far more orange than the others. If you look, the colour tone has changed now on the bird, and this has gone far more yellow or orange, if you like. And this is clearly the wrong white balance setting for this current setup. Um, so we'll change along to the next one now. Okay, now we're on cloudy white balance. A slight improvement, but we're still not there. It's still looking a little bit orange. Okay, the colours of the bird, bear in mind this section here is a kind of a brown and green. Okay, white feathers or a cream around here. So the colours aren't correctly represented at all. So we'll go along to the next one. Boom, there we go. Dramatic difference now. Now we're on tungsten, so the correct preset white balance function of the camera, or tungsten or incandescent, it may well say if you're using another camera system. And the colours now look more true to life. Okay, we've got the green of the plumage here, brown, and white feathers around here, and also this paper background now has gone to the white colour that it should be. So changing to tungsten has made a dramatic change in the white balance or how the final output of the video looks as well it will be the same for stills which we will see shortly so we'll go along to the next one okay this is now fluorescent lighting which you would find in offices and uh, office buildings those tube lights so now it's gone a little warmer again in color temperature and almost a little bit pink maybe um, well again it's closer than what auto white balance was and some of the other settings but nowhere near as good as what the tungsten setting was that you've just seen okay he's getting a tan <laughs> now we've just set this on flash because flash is daylight balanced okay um, light it's considerably cooler than tungsten light which the conditions are that we are shooting at the moment and hence it's gone really really warm in color so we've lost complete color now in the paper and on the actual bird as well uh, it's clearly the wrong white balance and that's why uh, flash is supposed to be used for flash photography so lightning bolt only when you're using flash so we'll have a look at the next setting now which is going to be custom and there we have it custom white balance taken from 
um, white balancing from choosing an image of the white paper as before you will need to have the camera on manual focus to do so going into the menu system, second tab along custom white balance and then referencing from the picture of the white paper that you have as your white balance setting and then when you pick the custom white balance setting okay, you then have a very very good colour rendition um, of the subject there even more so than what we have with tungsten so custom white balance is a good way to go although you cannot always set custom white balance in the shooting conditions that you are in which is why we have these presets there for you tungsten, um, shade, daylight, cloudy and so forth so it's important to pick the correct white balance setting for your shooting conditions or get as close as you can for correct colour rendering within your image or uh, as you in this case as you may see for the video that's being recorded so we'll have a quick look at the stills that I took earlier on and we'll just um, talk through that again okay let's have a look at a couple of the stills that were taken um, showing the different white balance settings and first up we can see auto white balance okay looking very orange completely the wrong color next up now we're on daylight which is a little worse it looked like it's got a tan and now um, shade and then we go to cloudy and next we have tungsten which is the correct preset for the lighting that we were using the colors were represented a lot clearer there and now onto fluorescent which is again going a little bit too warm a little bit of orange or maybe pink and then flash which is just way too orange and then we go on to the best result of all which is custom white balance takes longer to do and what the results as you can see are better so uh, hopefully that's helped you uh, understand white balance um, a little further sorry it's gone on for so long um, but I wanted to uh, cover everything um, that I thought would need covering so uh, if you, as usual if you have any questions comments or suggestions then stick them below and I will see you soon in the next video